Greetings, peacekeepers, and welcome back to another episode of Starfleet Command of my Pirates Plus Mod. I am Captain Tirak of the Heavy Battle Cruiser Injunction. Still sounds kind of doby, but the ship sure as heck isn't. The twin PPDs, the twin S-type torpedoes, we have been just blazing a path through the enemy. And we are currently in position to attempt to threaten this position. Last episode, we did take this tile, but it looks like we lost it in the ensuing time between saving and coming back. Because uh, this clock does actually tick on in real time. So let's not waste any more time, and let's get back in here, because I want to have this planet because I want to make sure that we are threatening that uh, starbase at all times with the strength of our planet. So, going to get into a nice little patrol against Gorn ships. I think we're in pretty good shape. I'm not 100% sure on that. Uh, we're down to three shuttles. That really kind of is the uh, the limit to how far, how long we can be out here is uh, how many wild weasels do we still have. So we're uh, chugging along. And uh, it was pointed out to me that I have been somewhat stupid in the fact that I keep complaining about a total lack of ISC missile defense. I have defensive tractor beams. If I turn these things on, when missiles come in, a tractor beam will activate and grab the missile and prevent it from hitting my hull. These are very useful. And I think back in Season 1, I quoted the plaque above the Federation's combat simulator as saying, Use your damn tractors and I haven't been using my tractors. So we will keep that in mind <laughs> in the future. Or we're not, maybe we'll continually forget. It, it is known to happen. I will constantly say I need to remember to do this thing and then totally forget to do that thing. Uh, but such is the way of life. So let's put that reinforcement onto the forward shield. Oh, we got a three-way fight going on here. But Orion Frigate off to our port side. Not a danger whatsoever. She's tiny, it's an LR plus. At most he's gonna have twin plasma torpedoes, which when you stop to think about it is actually kind of dangerous, but he won't. First sensor decoy is ready. We'll prep the second because it's always useful. And we will send the probe his way, take a quick look at what he looks like. Like all of these Gorn ships, he's got that weird thing going on. The uh, Gorn ships are very much all look the same, I've noticed. And he's got an R-type torpedo! Oh boy. The R-type torpedo, of course, the most powerful torpedo in the game dealing a whopping 50 damage per hit, and it will do that out to very long range. So uh, we're going to have to keep an eye on that. If he chooses to fire that at, like, skirmishing long range, we're going to have to be careful with our PPD shots, because, well, if we drop a Wild Weasel while using the PPD, I don't know if the PPD is going to shut off or if the Wild Weasel doesn't work. So, yeah. And we have to, we have to defend against that that R-type torpedo will just gut us in one shot. Uh, on the bright side, it does cost him an absolute ton of power to charge. So, uh, he has to sink a ton of effort into that. One, two, three, four. Here it comes. All stop. Wild Weasel is prepped. Wait for the, wait for it. Now fire. And our other torpedo? Okay, and he has dumped his Wild Weasel. I think our Wild Weasel was more effective. I'm gonna go ahead and underload, and underload. I don't know if that's giving me power or speed, but in either case, I'm gonna need it. Uh, we are increasing speed again. Our Wild Weasel has recharged. Well, it hasn't recharged, it's no longer in effect. We're gonna have to take the mine hit. I'm expecting another mine anytime now. Did he drop another Wild Weasel? No, he didn't. That's just his old one. Uh, and he's not projecting anything anymore. So all weapons fire, point blank range, right through the open shield. Only three of our phasers did not fire for that group. And he's taken out our rear shield thanks to his constant uh, blasting me with mines. Our PPDs are almost ready, so we will hope that he tries to scoop out away from us a bit. Because we cannot fire the PPD at this range. We are too close, and we also can't move away from him right now because we have no rear shield which makes that a tactic especially annoying. He's armed with fusion cannons. Slow down. I'm not entirely sure how to deal with him. If we keep under a speed of three, we won't set the mine off, I believe. Another shot through, and he fired a pseudo-torpedo. And we know it was a pseudo-torpedo, one, because it did no damage, but two, and more practically, uh, our torpedoes aren't charged yet, and our torpedoes and his torpedoes are on the same charge. Uh, do I want to shoot at you? I really don't care about you. But I will take the opportunity to go defense. We'll put on one defensive tractor. 
fire. The PPDs are not in position to shoot. He's on our starboard side. Prepare a starboard S torpedo. Crap. I'll stop. Okay, we're back on. Any incoming missile. I don't know if he's targeting us or him. Doesn't really matter. Oh, come on, pulled away a little bit further. A little bit further. That was a scatter pack. Reinforce all. Bump of the defen defensive tractors to four. And PPDs, open fire. Underloading, only shooting twice, rather than the uh, massive barrage that we can get underway normally. And we have lost one of our PPDs, thanks to this little jerk. Jerk is the, the nicest way I can put this. We do have to kill this guy. Like, I'm not kidding. He's more important than dealing with the little guy, the uh, little frigate, because this guy, well, he can deal a ton of damage to us. And he's dumped another wild weasel. Okay, that works, I guess, on some level. And uh, let's keep the engines intact. Our phasers are back up to full spread. We're not being targeted by any mines right now, so we can increase speed. And let's get in a little bit closer to you so I can just unload with all my phasers because I have a phaser advantage right now that I really want to use. And everything we got. Punch through the shield. Did a nice job of taking that down. Come along in a nice slow port turn. We want to basically stick right on top of him and stick to his rear. Uh, we do not have any more wild weasels and we probably should prep another one. It won't be ready in time, but we'll have it. In case uh, we don't kill him fast enough. Which is a very real concern that I am very truly concerned about right now. Our PPD is charged again. We're not in a position to use it. And we're going to have to pass over this guy. Which is going to suck because tractor beams won't work at super close range. He has fired a fusion beam at the proper range. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to cause much damage with it. Got a couple of nice good shots in through his rear. Most of his phaser arcs are offline, but I'm still concerned about that plasma R, which according to my data is still online. What does it take to kill you? PPD is at too close of a range to be operational. He's doing a surprising amount of damage to me. Our Plasma S Torpedo will come online shortly, and that should do him in, I hope. It may not. It's entirely possible that it will not, because Gorn ships are tanky as all hell. Uh, S-type Torpedo, come online. I would like to get you through the rear shield. And he's coming back. Darn it. That was a waste of a torpedo. And we really could have used it against this guy. So we'll come around to port. We don't really need the uh, Wild Weasel anymore, but we'll have it charged and ready, because what else are we going to use it for? Suicide shuttles, kind of pointless to us. What's the arc on these PPDs? Fairly narrow. So uh, we're going to have to come around, and the only weapons we really have right now... Alright, we hit him with one. So he's gotten a little bit of a spanking, but frankly not much. I mean, a single PPD shot is okay, but that range, it's not dealing a ton of damage. Oh, other PPD coming online right now. And that's outside of range, I believe. One, two, two good hits on him. And we're closing up close. And opening fire with our almost phaser G side mounts, the point defense mounts, which are very useful and a great invention to add to the fleet. Because they do quite, they do quite a bit of uh, point blank damage without costing a whole heck of a lot of power. Both of those mounts, despite the fact that they fire six shots, only cost three energy, which is really great. Our uh, S-type torpedoes on the starboard side are ready to rock, so let's get this party started. Most of our phasers are online and ready to shoot as well, so we will uh, high energy turn this and unload. Let's see if he stops. He did. He wild weaseled. So we're going to wait for this uh, attack shift to go away. The Wild Weasel gives you a, de a defensive shift of two, which becomes our attack shift. And it's gone. And we had another torpedo. And there we go. Whew. A little bit of a dogfight there. That R-type torpedo was uh, nasty. Very, na very nasty. And not something that we want to fight all that often. R-type torpedoes are, well, evil. Unless you have them. If they're on your ship, then they're great. But if they're on an enemy ship, you really don't want to get involved in that. Only that much prestige, and we take the planet back, we're going to go back to the shipyard, or not the shipyard, we want supply. 43 points of damage, we need 5 shuttles, and uh, only used up a few spare parts, we'll go up to 15, 
We'll go up to 32. I know Marines aren't nearly as important on this ship, but I want to keep in a decent supply. I don't imagine that any of the ships that we're going to want are going to cost less than around 2,500 prestige, so that's why I don't really want to bother with the shipyard right now. Are you a monster? You are indeed a monster. You are the plasma monster. Crap. Um, prep that. So the asteroid monster is, of course, equipped with a plasma torpedoes, and uh, that can be really, really nasty. It's not actually an asteroid that's a monster. It's this thing that's, like, on top of the asteroid. So... In some ways, I guess I can think of it like a space hermit crab? And, like, the asteroid is its shell, I assume? I'm not entirely sure. I'm certain that there is a Starfleet Battles magazine, like, article that deals specifically with these monsters. Because that's that's how tabletop gaming worked back then. So, you had things... As, I know Warhammer 40k better than I do anything about Starfleet Battles. So, Rogue Trader would come out with optional rules and fluff for all kinds of things. And o Rogue Trader was basically a magazine for Warhammer 40k. Which is another tabletop uh, war game that uh, was super popular. Still is pretty popular. Uh, if you've never heard of it, because you're not super into tabletop gaming, you would probably know it from the computer games Dawn of War, Dawn of War 2, and Dawn of War 3. All of which are set in the Warhammer 40k universe. It's a pretty cool game. Uh, Go Guard. 8th edition just recently dropped, which is a brand new rules edition, which changed a whole ton of rules. So uh, 40k fans are currently dealing with those changes, for good or ill. And in fact, one of the uh, things I've thought about bringing to the channel is uh, Battlefleet Gothic. There's a, there's a computer game for it that came out fairly recently, which was pretty fun back when I played in beta. Unfortunately, I didn't have time to keep playing it when it actually got released. School and everything got in the way, but now that I've got more time, hey, that may come to the channel too, and we will have three games on the channel. Haven't really decided about it yet, though. So at a spate range of 15, we will open fire with the PPDs, because I like this sweet spot range. Bump. And we're hitting with all of them. He does have an R-type torpedo, which does make me super scary. But... Okay. Turn. Turn. Slow down. Slow down. Now! Crap, we didn't do it fast enough. We took the R-type torpedo. And look how much damage it did. Completely took away this tier 3 green shield. And dealt internal damage. That's what we're dealing with here. That's the strength of what we're fighting. And I realized that we were not increasing the shields, which was dumb of us, but I don't think it would have helped. Not much, anyway. So we're going to come back around, get in on this guy, and uh, hope to cause as much damage as we possibly can before he has a chance to fire that again. And we hit him for a decent amount of damage. We're going to pull away, build some speed, or build some distance in, and then reverse course and fire the PPDs again. They are a fairly effective weapon. So building some distance, we need to get outside of our range of... I want to say that it's six, but I'm thinking it's actually four. PPD selected. On arc. No shot. One, two. So good shots there, but uh, not dealing nearly enough damage that we need to. Firing with the Phaser 3s. Let's see if we can get with the Phaser 1s. There we go. The Phaser 1s getting involved. We took out one of his torpedoes. That's not good. It's only the F-type torpedo. That's not even the dangerous one. Uh, so we're going to stick here nice and close. We'll have twin S-type torpedoes to fire right away. And we're going to get ready to uh, drop the Wild Weasel as fast as we can. Reduce speed. Come on. S-type torpedo. Come on, Lionel, right now. Torpedoes away. He's badly damaged. Oh crap, I jumped the gun on that. His R-type torpedo is still available. This is gonna hurt. Shields! Reinforce all. Maximum power. Yep, that was the G. Or not the G, the R-type torpedo. Just... Ow. At least I think it was the R-type torpedo. Maybe it wasn't. So we're just sort of sitting here in this circle. He's out of weapons, so I'm not concerned anymore. I am completely at ease and calm, where before we were panicking. Just a little bit. You know, just a, a tasteful amount of panic. So we'll uh, increase speed and finish eliminating the monster. Excellent! 
Space is once again saved and protected for the mighty ISC, for we bring not just peace to na empires and nations, but we also deal with random asteroid monsters. It's just how we roll. Aren't we such wonderful peacekeepers? Join the ISC today. Uh, supplies. Patch that. We lost a marine. We didn't bother repairing anything, so that's good. But we did lose two shuttles, so we had to spend 15 for that. Where is the current state of technology? 1980. Uh, 2076. ICVS. It's our first strike carrier. That'd be pretty cool. Um, I don't really think carriers work quite well as a, uh, I don't think carriers would serve us very well as a support ship. As, like, one of us, sure, would be great. Uh, so 1980 is Star Cruisers. We're gonna buy one. We're gonna add this, the, uh, the Lawmaker. So the Injunction, the Lawmaker, what next? The Lawyer? Uh, so he's basically a little version of us, to a certain extent. Okay, not entirely. But I think he will support our operations quite well. He has two Plasma S's and only a single PPD, so he's not going to be quite as good on that front. But uh, a command a command flagship should have something to work with it. So we are pretty much out of cash now. So let's go poke around. Missions. It's a patrol. Good. We don't, we don't want to face, like, an actual, honest-to-God, dangerous battle station <laughs> right now. Not until at least we get another one of these uh, these uh, CAYs. So increase speed up to our combat flight speed. Go up here, prep our wild weasel, because it is Gorn that we are assuming. Uh, 2275.1. We're getting close, I think, to another era. That'll be pretty interesting. And, ooh, some sort of electrical storm going on over here. An electrified nebula of some description. And we are escorted, as you can see, the lawmaker only has a single PPD, whereas we have two. And other than that, he's pretty much exactly the same. We are fighting a BDL. A battle destroyer leader, I want to say? Because Gorn and Federation follow pretty much the same nomenclature, so B would be battle, unless it's attached with a second B, in which case it's a battleship. BB is battleship. Uh, D is generally found in destroyers, so it would be DD normally, uh, but they try and keep it low, and then L for leaders. So yeah, I'm gonna guess BDL is a battle destroyer leader. Could be wrong, but I don't really care if I am, because they are the enemy and inferior to us, quite obviously. Yes, they, they need to recognize the superiority of the ISC and give up their childlike ways of dealing war and joining us as we do war. I'm not really sure about the whole ISC philosophy here. We seem to be killing an awful lot of people to stop people from killing an awful lot of people. Like, at what point do you finally say, hey guys, maybe this isn't working? Is that a probe this way? See what he's got. Uh, increase speed to 13, that's our cruising speed. When we're charging weasels, he's got two Fs and a G, so a decent amount of firepower there. And, uh, the lawmaker on our starboard wing now. A nice little division going on here. We'll get another one on the port side. We look exactly the same. So it's kind of making me a little bit puzzled because where did we cram the other PPD and all the command equipment, right? Like, I totally get... Oh, there we go. See? This is, this is the glory that I wanted. Like, that is everything I have ever wanted. Everything I have ever desired is what we just did there. And I want a third one to be able to do that more. Because was that not cool? And he fired it around the same range I did, so apparently we've been uh, we've been picking a good range to do that. And now he's opened fire with his weapons. He no longer has any sort of defense from these torpedoes. Oh, glorious. Having a second ship with you, like a properly powerful second ship, is great. Although, we could lose him at any moment, and that would really suck. So we'll try not to. Let's come a hard starboard turn and drive right in for him. Bring all our forward phaser batteries. Do the ISC actually use phasers? I think that'll be an interesting question, because the ISC are an extragalactic empire, right? They're not from around here, so do they actually use the same technology that the rest of this galaxy does? Are we just using phasers as a stand-in for their real weapons, and if so, what are their real weapons, and what are they called? I'm just idly curious. I think it would be interesting to know. 
because, you know, nobody else came up with the plasmatic pulsar disruptor, which is essentially, let's fire waves of plasma at somebody. Instead of a self-contained plasma sun ball that we shoot at them, let's just shoot, like, a whole tsunami of plasma their way. It's also a great chasing weapon. Ha <laughs> ha, yes! I love that. That I have wanted to do that since I've gotten a PPD, to actually destroy a ship with just PPD fire. So good. So very good. I love it. 122 prestige gains, so not a whole ton. And we've neutralized the tile, but that's gonna... Actually, taking this tile is going to have to wait for next time, I think. Or maybe not. Let's see. If it's a patrol, if it's just a simple patrol, we'll go on it. Okay, it's a simple patrol. We'll go on it real fast. We'll try and finish this quick. We are getting towards around where an episode should end now. But uh, we do have some leeway in here. So let's increase speed. Let's do a patrol. Let's try and take this station. Pacification patrol. 2275.3 on pacification patrol. We are to defeat enemy ships encountered and to disengage if outnumbered. So let's see if we can take these people on. Apparently 14. I've been misremembering. I thought 13 was our cruising speed. It's not. It's 14. Hmm. I should pay more attention to things. Let's uh, buff that forward reinforcement to maximum, please. Thank you. And increase time. We are fighting another frigate. And according to fleet menu, it is a DDL, so a destroyer leader. Send a probe his way. Find out exactly what he's carrying. Sensor decoy, decoy is prepared. He looks to be the exact same thing. Maybe I'm reading it wrong, but he looks like he's got the same weapons. We will prepare another decoy, just in case. After all, you want at least two, always. That was a little bit of far shot, man. No reason to do that. Select the PPDs. Range of 15. Oh, we're going to get all four shots in. And uh, prepare a starboard torpedo. Now the poor torpedo, as soon as it hits him. If he uh, weasels, we will be in an excellent position. Aha, he weaseled. Slow down. We're going to trundle up to him, and we're just going to lay right into him with all kinds of firepower. The attack shift is gone. Just a little bit closer now. Now. Boom. I think this will do him in. I don't think he's going to survive this. There he goes. ISC ships are quite satisfying. Ooh, I like that one. That's a cool nebula. I am constantly surprised that whenever I, like, see random things in the background. They're very awesome. And I comment about this at least once an episode, I feel. Maybe not. Okay, we took the territory, and that will be the end of an episode. We have managed to capture a Gorn Starbase at 23-3, which now threatens another planet. Oh, we are getting on such a good roll here. Taking quite a bit of territory. Let's take a look at the large map. We haven't taken a ton here, but what we have taken has been important. Planets, they build commerce. Stations, they build commerce. They also produce, you know, the defensive aura around the area, which helps them take things. So the more we grab, the less powerful they get, and we have grabbed some pretty important things. But in any event, end of an episode, I've been Captain Tirak. If you like what you're seeing, hit that like button, subscribe, leave a comment, like that one guy who told me about tractor beams, the fool I. And I will see you all in the next episode.